Well, here is our next candidate for restoration. It is a upright Crosley Model 157. Not sure of the year yet, but I would say 20s, maybe maybe 30s. Uh, uses some really old uh, tubes. There's the dial indicator in there. And you see it does turn. And the speaker grill leaves a lot to be desired. <laughs> Not sure if the speaker is okay or damaged. It looks, it looks okay. It might be bound. It is moving a little. I don't want to push on it because it's so old and uh, with the grill cloth down like that, the speaker cone most likely uh, got dried out a little bit, but we'll we'll check it out. And um, uh, there's some miscellaneous wires. That's the antenna wire there. And there's the what's left of the line cord. We'll put a new cloth line cord on it. Top's not in bad shape. It's got one scar there. Looks like a burn from a cigarette or something. Uh, the baffle boxes are still intact. And, um, they make baffle for the speaker. Here's the speaker. It's a Magnavox speaker with a field coil and the output transformer on the speaker. And uh, there's the Crosley tag. And some information about the tubes, cautions. Um, and here's the tubes and you can see, I mean, that's totally dusty, but you can see how unusual that tube is. Uh, the sockets are marked. This tube came apart, which I'll show you in a minute, but it's a uh, 56. And this tube here, which looks original to this set, yeah, that's an original Crosley tube. Awesome, I hope that tube tests good. If it's good, great. If it's not good, We'll return it to the customer along with a good tube and radio so that they can have it. And that's a 42. So put that guy back in there. Okay, and then this is a replacement tube that was added years later. And this one is a well, it's another 42, so it had two 42s in it. There it is, 42. Um, but this is a replacement for the original style Crosley. Filament string is the same location. These two. Okay, then we have two other tubes back there, three tubes, there's one in here. So. Let's see, I'm counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine tube set. Uh, ten tubes, it's got another one there. Got, and it might be a socket in there, I don't know. There's ten tubes. Uh, this guy's a cool little can here. I'm not sure what that is. A coil, no doubt. Um, and like I said, there's the antenna. Nice copper wire antenna, it's a little loose, but uh, that's pretty good. Heavy gauge copper, so we'll protect that and try to salvage that speaker as best we can. I'll put it in a cardboard box to keep it safe while we're using it. A lot of dust on it. I'll blow it all off with my compressor and clean it out. But the case is in nice shape. It's on legs. I like that. Nice design. So that's our next project. And, uh, we'll get
get to work on that and I'll upload some videos as we go. Thanks for watching. Okay, this is the tube that uh, came apart while when the customer was moving it over here. It uh, just this part just fell right out and um, but the leads are still there so I think I might be able to solder it back in. Hopefully it's good. It's a Crosley too, original Crosley for this set. Made in USA by, what is that, Arcturus Radio Tube Company. Arcturus. Yeah. So I think I can get that back in and re-solder it. Um, it's a five pin, so it's probably the rectifier. Anyway, and there's two of the knobs. One of the knobs was missing. So, again, thanks for watching, and I'll continue this video before long. Well, I got this Crosley out of the cabinet, and I don't think it's ever been messed with. If it has, it's been a long time ago. Look at all the dust in this system. Look at this. Un <laughs> Unreal. And that's an original tube. I'm hoping it's still good. That's a beautiful tube. Look at the dust inside these. You can't even see that tube. It's still buried in dust. And these are worn really bad. So, what? and the other thing was, I had to take the speaker and the chassis out together. That's so unusual. Um, it's hardwired in. Usually it's a plug. Um, I might figure out how to put a plug on this before we put it back in the cabinet. And that way, if anyone ever has to work on it again, they can take the chassis out without having to unscrew the speaker and carry them both together. The stroke is heavy, and so is that speaker. And uh, carrying them both together, you got to be very careful. You don't hurt anything at the same time you're carrying all that weight. So I still got to fix that vacuum tube that's busted there. It came out of its socket. I uh, soldered it back in, and it's a 56. So, but basically, right now I got to pull up the schematic, and uh, we'll take a look at the bottom in just a second. I'll flip it up on its side so we can see underneath, and uh, see what we got there. So it's a two, four, six, eight, ten tube radio. Anyway, there it is. There's the fuel coil on the speaker, and the output transformer is mounted to the speaker. It's got a three-section ganged tuning condenser or capacitor, and of course these wires need some attention, but they look okay. This one's the worst for the wear. Um, and uh, this doesn't look like this particular unit is totally isolated from the chassis. That's a good thing. So even though, well, this tuning condenser is isolated on this frame. So we got to change these. But it's, um, it's different than most, the way it's set up. So that's good. Um, all right, let me get it up on the side, and we'll take a look at the bottom. Um and then I'm going to just spend some time getting the worst of the dust, vacuum the worst of the dust off here, and uh, we'll continue. But let me get it up and we'll look at the bottom. We'll take a look underneath and see what we got. Okay, I just got it up on its side, and you're seeing it same time I am. Uh, give it take a couple seconds, and... Uh, we got some interesting components in here. We, first off, we got this bowel capacitor here that's connected to, um, I guess, I don't know which one's the volume control. I think this is probably the, oh, that's frozen up. I don't know what that is. This could be the tone control here. Or this might be the volume control, and this might be the on-off switch and tone control. They usually put them together. And of course, the tuning is right there on the tuning dial. But well, we got uh, this bowel capacitor, which has got an aluminum core, plugs on the end. 
And then we got an electrolytic that looks like somebody added this at some point. I don't know. That may be original, but I don't know the way that's standing off there. It is secured to the uh, frame support here. So this is a eight, an 8 mega, um, microfarad 450 working volt dry electrolytic, which is leaked out. And you can see it leaked out onto the wire there. Uh, then we got a cardboard box, uh, probably dual cap, maybe five microfarads each or four microfarads each. Um, that one's a big box, so I would think it's dual. I'm um, not seeing all the way around to tell for sure. Maybe just a single. No, it's got two connections here, so it's a dual capacitor. And uh, then we've got... These two coils here, which are really interesting. They're like the can coils that are on the top of the unit. And we got this gigantic electrolytic capacity here. And it's a um, two, two, uh, two electromagnet, um, microfarad capacitor. And that one's it's really cool. It's a Aerie... A-E-R-O-V-O, -E Avaro, high farad, electrolytic capacitor. <laughs> high farad being probably six and eight or something like that. Um, operating voltage, 450. Uh, maximum peak voltage, looks like 500. Total capacity... BC, whatever that means. Um, wow, it's just interesting. Polarity of terminal to be observed. Polarity of terminals to be observed. Um, let's get the type number. It doesn't say how many microfarad it is. That's so weird. Probably does on the back side of the uh, label there. Then we got a couple wire We got a wire round power resistor here. Right, to piece and we've got what looks like uh, these are the turning capacitors to adjust the IF um, they look almost like uh, selenium rectifiers the way they're built in little squares see that but they are actually wafer capacitors and of course we have a lot of paper wax paper uh, capacitors they all have to go Electrolytics have to go. This one might be bypassing. No, I don't think it is bypassing that one. Oh, yeah, that one's disconnected there. So this one was a replacement for part of this can that went out. And it's rated 8, so I don't know what that one's rated. We'll find out. It's got 2 in it. But either way, we'll take both of those out. Um, I, would, I can stuff this can with the new capacitors. But there really isn't any reason to because it's underneath the chassis and you can't see it. Um, but either way, uh, we'll decide. On, we can go either way on that. So we'll decide on that. The advantage of stuffing it is it's still there. The disadvantage is it's taking up a whole lot of the chassis and producing a lot of heat because, you know, that's that much less circulation of air. And it's harder to work on because you get that big old contraption right in the middle of the set that you don't need. To give you a perspective for the customer, let me uh, uh, pass it here if I can. I'm trying to show you a hassle this morning. Okay. And to give you a perspective, here is a um, 33 microfarad at 450 volts. Same voltage rating as that. And it's 33. This is 8, which replaces part of that. But that's 33. So that gives you an idea. Uh, here is a... Well, this is a 68 at 200 volts. You can see the difference in size. So, 
you can see how much space that joke has taken up. The technology is just unbelievable in electrolytic capacities between then and now. Uh, they were still inventing them. That's hence the expensive can and the high expensive label with all of the marketing spiel about how great and excellent new technology that is. <laughs> it's cool as anything. Don't get me wrong. I love it. Um, Anyway, uh, that's where we are on the bottom. So the next thing for me to do is go ahead and at least dust this off, vacuum it off, and get rid of most of this dust so I'm not constantly doing this to my hands. Of course, I could be wearing gloves, but I'd still be getting dust all over everything I touch. So uh, this is just from cleaning my hands from carrying it over here. A little bit of alcohol on a paper towel, and look at that. It's just, of course, the camera don't pick it up as bad as it really looks. It's, it's pretty well almost brown. Anyway, um, I'll dust it off, and then we'll continue. At some point, I'll take it outside and blow it out with my compressor. But for right now, I just want to get it where we can at least troubleshoot it. The cord uh, doesn't have a plug, which doesn't surprise me. I don't know if this is a curtain burner cord. I haven't gotten that far yet. Um, it could be, it, does, it looks like a regular plug, so probably not, probably just a regular cord. Here it is here. Yeah, it's just a standard cord. It's not a curtain burner. So we can replace that with a, another um, cloth cord because this one's totally deteriorated. Any way you bend it, it's going to do that and crack and, and all, so... We could put a new cord on there, but we will put a cloth cord so it be, you know, look better, look like what it did when it was original. Um, but bear in mind that when I talk about uh, replacing things with area specific, I don't mean they're going to look like what you got because what you got is 100 years old and dried out and no good. It didn't look like that when it was put on. So when we put a new one on, it'll look like it did when it came off the assembly line. It'll be a new cord that is for that particular era. Uh, if the people who put these disassembled this, people who assembled this Crosley seen this cord now, back then, they would freak. <laughs> so, you know, this is, to them, it would look just as bad as it does to us, right? Because that's not the way it looked when they built it. The same with these capacitors. You know, they're all deteriorated. Look at all the speckles and stuff on that box. That did not look like that. This unit was not this color. I mean, this was, these were all brand new parts and clean and nice. You know, um, well, we're going to do our best to make most of it clean and nice again. So I don't, you know, want to do too much because I don't think the, cu the customer wants me to restore it per se other than restore it electronically, uh, but not mechanically, not, you know, take everything off, clean the case and and all of that. I don't think he wants to put that kind of expense into it. There's no need to um, because it's in a cabinet, so it's not a showpiece. It doesn't sit out where you can see the chassis. It just needs to be cleaned, you know, get the dirt and debris and dust off and it'll look a lot better. So anyway, I'm going to clean it up and we'll go from there. Okay, it's time to repair these two tubes that got damaged. Um, this one lost its cap and it has a little bit of a loose base, which we can fix that easy. So we're going to put the cap in. I already desoldered the hole, as you can see through there, uh, through the cap and we'll put a little bit of glue on that to hold it on and we solder that and then this one the base came completely off while uh, we were unloading it bringing it in um, the customer's son and I were carrying it and the tube just fell out fell right out of the base so apparently the solder joints let go long ago now uh, this is a five pin tube it's a 58 56, sorry, and um, <clears throat> the way that goes is uh, 
like this. We have the grid is on a five pin tube. The grid is the top two pin, at least it is on a 58, I'm for sure. So this is the grid. These are the heaters. And then this is the plate and this is the cathode. So we got heater, uh, pin one is heater, plate, grid, cathode, and heater. And that's the way the five pins go. So looking at the bottom of the tube, it's clockwise. And the top of the tube, it's counterclockwise um, from the top of the socket. But from the bottom, it's, it's always clockwise. You start at the, the two heater pins are usually together on these older tubes. The first one on the left is pin one. And then you go one, two, three, four, five. So what we got to figure out is on the tube itself, the five pins come out in a straight line across. There's three on one side. On this side here, there's three. And then there's two there. And we, yeah, you can look through here and see where they connect, and that kind of helps. Figuring out the filament, too, is easy because that's going to be continuity, which we're going to check right now and find out which two are the heater. Now, on the heater, it doesn't matter which one goes where in the socket because it's AC. So it doesn't matter which one you put the heaters on as long as the two heaters are on the two heater pins. It doesn't matter at what order. So we'll turn this on and we'll set it to continuity. Okay, so you'll hear that. Now, um, I'm see if I can get a little light down there, it might help some. The um, only two that have continuity are the heater, obviously, because everything else does not make con direct connection in its vacuum tube. And I'm thinking that these two that are by themselves are probably the heater. Now there is uh, insulation, you know, coating on the copper, so kind of got to get to the solder joint, and that doesn't seem to be it. Okay, so process of elimination. We want to find the two heater pins first, because those are the easiest to find. It is possible that this tube is no good, in which case finding the heater pins would be very hard because there they are. Okay, so there's our heater. So we'll move that over there and this one down here and we'll move these three up here. So these two are the heaters. And they're going to go to... I'll leave that there so you can see it. And just put it this way. They're going to go to those bottom two pins. Now we have to decide which one is the grid, which one is the plate, which one is the cathode. And you would think, well, that'll be just about impossible, right? No, not so. Um, uh, if you pull up the spec, you can find out some information. And um, it's going to be a little difficult to find out. But the capacitance values between the elements is such that um, you can check the capacitance and find out. For instance, the grid to plate capacitance on this tube, from the grid to the plate, is 3.2 picofarads. From the grid to the cathode is 3.2 picofarads. From the plate to the cathode is 2.2 picofarads. Now, of course, there's a tolerance, but basically the lowest two uh, capacitances will be the plate and the cathode. And if the plate and the cathode got 2.2, then the others two with the grid should have 3.2. So once we got the plate and the cathode, we can go from plate to grid and cathode to grid, and there should be 3.2. Then um, we'll just have to just figure out which one is the plate and which one is the uh, I mean, which one is the cathode and which one is the, yeah, the plate based on that. But it's doable. The other thing is to check the actual wires. If you can see in the tube where the wires are coming up to, the plate is the outside element. 
So the one that connects to the outside element is going to be the plate lead. And if you look in there, it's a little hard to see, um, but you can see the wires that connect to the different places. The cathode will be the one that goes straight up the middle, and that's that pipe that comes out the top center there. You can see that in the top center. I don't know, you probably can't see it in the camera, but that's the cathode. So, um, and the filament goes inside the cathode. It goes up through the middle of the cathode. So the plate on this particular tube uh, will be the, out, the one that connects to the can, and it's just a matter of looking around till you find it. And I think it's going to be that one there, which looks like the second one coming out the bottom here. It looks like it's this one. So we'll find out. But that looks like it's the plate. So anyway, let me go ahead and determine which is which. And then uh, we will figure that out. Um, uh, the lowest capacitance, like I said, is the plate to the cathode, which is 2.2. So let's just see if we can figure that out. Okay, there we go. We're on a nano scale. And let's try these here. I may have to scrape these wires to get actual values. Okay, that's 30. And that's 27. So let's check across those two. Seven. That's 25 in that orientation. Sorry about hitting the camera there. And then on this one here, okay, we got 56. So it looks like this is the grid here. But I'm going to do a visual check and find out for sure. And I don't, unfortunately, I can't show that on the camera. But um, basically, that's how you tell if you. Let me see if I can get a light to shine in there. I had to use this camera support that bounces around a little bit. And I apologize for that. But that's the only way I could get close enough to the actual tube so you can see it. Okay, there we go, that's better. Okay, so these two pins, they come down on the side of the plate, they connect to the plate there, and the wire that connects to it is this center wire it looks like here. There's a wire that comes right up to that terminal there. The two heater wires come up here and connect up there with little fine wires. Actually, there's a heater wire here and a heater wire there, and there's the cathode wire. So if you trace them down, this would be the cathode, this would be the plate, And this one here is the heater that we've already found. This would be, uh, I believe this is the other heater, and this would be the grid. Wish that was a little clearer where you could see that better, but. And then the first one is the heater here, heater, heater. And this would be the grid, which should go up into the cathode. 
Ah, okay, I got those two backwards. Now I can see it clearly. This one is connecting to the outside of the tube going up. So this is the cathode. So we got heater, cathode. And then this one is the grid. Because it's the wire that goes up into the tube. And then this one is the plate. And this is the other heater. Yes. Okay, so that's the way it should be. Heater, cathode, grid, plate. So I need to switch those two so that the plate is on this side and the heat cathode is on that side because that's the way they go up through the tube, in the socket, I mean. So heater, heater, plate, grid, cathode. And I'm going to put that in, solder it, and... We'll do a test. We'll test the tube and find out how it goes. Now, the, this this tube is old. It's an original Crosley, <clears throat> like many of the others. But unfortunately, the number on this tube was completely gone. It's, they're on the top on these Crosleys. And it's totally gone. There is no, not even a remnant of a number left. So I'm, I'm going to just put a label on the base with 56 on it, so we'll know it's a 56, and we'll go from there. Now, I'm doing this this way because I wanted to explain how to do it. There are other 56s just like this one in this radio. I could easily pull one out, put it on the side, and look at the socket wires and see where they go and make sure that I got them the same, but I'm pretty confident that this is it. And I want to do it this way because um, I wanted you to see how to do it. And then, you know, we'll go ahead and I'll go ahead and test it and make sure that it's right before we uh, go any further with that. So the next thing is to get these wires to come through. But I'm going to check this um, continuity one more time. Um, to make sure that I didn't move that around. So. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's going to take me a little while to do this, so I'm just going to pause the video while I do it. Okay, I tried to get the wires in there and... Uh, they're just a little bit too short. I uh, just can't get them straight enough to get in. So I just put some extensions on the wires, just tacked them on. They'll at least be there for me to pull the wires down. And this, I scrape the wires enough so that um, the solder will flow and hit the wire good. And then I'll just clip them off at the bottom of the base. But um, I went ahead and uh, got the two here and I marked the two heaters on the glass and then the grid, I marked it there and then I marked it on the uh, wire itself in black. You can't see that, but it's got some black marker on it. And then these two, of course, go to the opposite side of where they come out. So that, that kind of like where it comes out at the bottom of the tube, it goes to the opposite side. This one comes out on this side, goes to the opposite side. And that kind of like got me oriented for all five pins. So now I'm going to put it in a socket, cut them off, solder them, and check the tube. If that works, great. If not, then we just have to order a tube. But um, good chance I saved the tube. I've done this many times before and saved tubes. Um, I've had a lot of luck with uh, just getting the pins to line up. But I also had times where I've had to solder extensions on them. This one has a little bit much solder. It may not fit through the pin, but we'll see. I can always clean it up if I need to, but I'm going to work on getting that in the socket now, and then I'll show it to you before I clip and solder the wires. So I'll be right back. Okay. And, and sorry for the bouncing camera. There we have the wires sticking through the socket, and I'm just pulling them in 
to get them nice and snug so that the solder joints are up at the pins. Okay, and you can see the solder joints there. The ones that are coming through, the ones that are not, are right below the surface, and I scrape the wire enough, you can see the solder in there. This one's easy to see. So at this point, it's just a matter of soldering the wires back on. So, yeah. Um, what I want to do is uh, leave these wires extended just a little, tack them on, make sure they're okay, and test the tube. Actually, I think I'll do that first. And then, um, before I cut them, um, I mean, before I cut them all the way down, I'm going to leave a little bit on there, just enough to get it in the tube tester and test it. Then I want to be able to pull them out a little bit to get some glue in there and then push it back in. Uh, but I don't want to glue it until I know they're right. I'm pretty sure they're right. I'm pretty confident, but want to make sure. So what I'm going to do now is go ahead and tack these in place. And yeah, I'm using a glass on a, in a vise. Isn't that something? Oh, I'm going to try that again. Yeah, I just wanted to balance it enough so I can solder them. So we'll start with one that has solder showing. This one has solder showing. Okay, but anyway, I'm going to cut these leads. Oop. About that long. Because I can definitely get them back in. And yet, I can always cut them off. Take the solder off and cut them off some more. But at this length, at this length, they will make register in the, in the tube tester without having to be all the way down. Okay, so I'm gonna solder them there. I'm just gonna tack them enough that the tube tester can actually make good contact with the actual wires themselves. So let me go ahead and just tack them in. I'll try to do one while you're looking so you can see what I'm doing. These are already primed on the top, so I just gotta get them hot there. See, and then now that's tacked on there. Good enough for me to um, test the tube. And so that's what I'm gonna do all the way around. I gotta be careful because that little wire will come off the other wire. They're just tacked in place too. As long as they nope, that one didn't grab. As long as they grab, they'll be fine. So anyway, I'm gonna stop the video, do that, test the tube, and I'll be back. Okay, there we have it. The Socket is soldered back in and cut the wires and soldered them. Put some glue in there to hold the tube. It's nice and tight. And it tests 75%. Awesome. Well into the green. So this tube has been saved from destruction. It took a little while. You know, I'm not going to charge a customer for the time it took to fix this tube. Um, it costs more than to buy a tube. But I will charge a percentage of the time, you know, because I had to do it. It was either that or buy a tube and have to pay shipping. So, but, um, yeah, we saved the tube. And it's a good tube. It's 75%, and it's an original Crosley tube for this radio. So, all the way around is a win-win-win. The next tube is uh, one we got to do the cap on. So let me plug this one back in its socket here, and it's ready. It's ready. Okay, this one's a little, a lot easier. First thing we want to do is tighten this up a little bit. And to do that, I mean, you there's so many people tell you so many different ways of doing things. 
it doesn't matter to me what you do. You don't even need to do it. I mean, that's that'll that's fine just the way it is. That's because the cap got pretty much stuck on the grid co uh, clip so bad that trying to break it free, you know, does this. Not only that, the old glue in there deteriorates over time and they get loose. Even ones that don't have a grid cap end up doing that. And when you take tubes out of a socket, always take it out by the base. Don't pull up on the tube. Um, so there's a, a little bit of a advice there. But um, anyway, so what we're going to do is we're going to put this back in here and we're going to line up that little cap. There it is. So the wire sticking out the top. You can't see it, but trust me, it is. I can feel it with my finger. And we, you probably see it there. Can you see that at all? Too much light, maybe? No. Come down here. I don't think you can see the wire sticking out, but, but trust me, it's sticking out. So, but before we do that, we want to put some glue on the cap and then put it back on. And don't dig this stuff out. I mean, out of the cap. Don't, don't dig that out of there. Leave it in there. I know it's deteriorated and let go, but it's filler. So don't take it out. Just put glue on it and then push it on and hold it for a second. I use uh, super glue. It does fine. There's no reason to worry about it. Um, if it breaks free later, it doesn't matter. You're not going to be taking the tube in and out of there anyway. And as long as the solder connection's fine, you know, and you're gentle taking the cap off, it'll be fine. Also, what I do is I put a little bit of oil after I clean these really well and I clean the grid cap, I mean the grid connector. I put a little bit of oil on there and that makes them slide on a lot easier and they're not likely to lock up like that again. Um, you know, but again, we're trying to save a good tube, so we're going to do what we can to save it. So, let me, uh, I can probably show you this whole process. I'm just going to stick this on here. And again, I'm not putting no pressure on the glass. It's just enough to balance it there. And I'll move the camera over so you can see. Actually, I'll move that over. It'll be easier. Okay. So we're going to put a little bit of glue. And you don't have a lot of time lining it up, but you got some. So we're going to put a little bit of glue inside here. Around here. And I use enough to make it stick. So the longer, the more glue you have, the longer it will stick. And you gotta line that up there, got it. And just hold it down and let it set there a minute or so, so that it sticks good. You know, it's not the best thing on glass and I realize glass gets hot, these tubes get hot and the glue lets go. And I hear all kinds of horror stories, but don't trust them. I've been doing this for a while and it works fine. Um, if it does loosen up, you're no worse off than when you started. And you can always redo it. So, you know, not a big deal. Okay, it's getting there. And not only that, I, I also know that uh, it's fine because when I solder them on, I'm putting heat on it and I'm using a high power solder gun and yet it still don't let go. So, I put a little flux on it and put a little solder on the soldering iron and oh sorry about that I'm really close to this camera and what we're going to do is just fill that little there's a divot there where the pin the wire comes out you just want to fill it with solder once you got enough on there, just heat it up. Now, you'll notice probably that it didn't grab the wire very well on the first time. That's okay. Put a little more flux right in the center. It's boiling up there. Put a little more solder. It will grab. Just be patient when you're doing this. And there we got it. 
it's good. All right. Now we have a new, the grid cap back on. Um, use a little rag damped with alcohol, and you can get the excess flux, flux off there and cool it off all at the same time. Again, I'm testing this tube, so I'll know for sure that I got it. If I don't got it, I'll just heat it up and do it again. But it looks like there's a divot around the wire, but the wire seems to be making good contact. And this is a 58. So now on this, same thing. I just put a little bit of glue around the base. Just go around the base. Nice coat. That's it. Where is that? See? It's already set up. Take your alcohol rag and keep it off the get it off the tube and off the black part. You, as long as you don't rub down in that groove, you're not gonna get it out of there. It's already um, soaked down between the glass and the shield. And there you go. And again, you take it out of the socket by the base. You don't pull the tube and you won't have uh, too many problems. That'll last for a long time, as long as this tube lasts, right? When the tube is bad, then you got to change it. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and test this tube. You might get a little bit of white around there. You know, you can scratch it off with your fingernail if you want. It comes right off. But what's down between the base and the glass will we'll keep it tight long enough for you to be working on the radio. And then after that, it'll, it'll stay. You know, the tube ain't going to move around, especially since this tube's in a shield anyway. Goes in the shield and it's really tight in there. See, it's tight when I shove it up in there. It ain't moving. So, you know, it'll be fine. And again, we saved the tube. You know, you can't get these tubes. This is an, one of the original ones made by Aracturus Radio Tube Company exclusively, of course, for Crosley made, made in USA. And this is the etch socket, the sought-after tubes. So you definitely want to save them when you can. Okay. So anyway, that's the repair of two tubes. The next thing will be to recap this radio, uh, at least... Uh, definitely I'm going to um, redo the electrolytics and then we can power it up and see if we can get anything out of it before we uh, worry about all of the caps. Uh, we, they all got to be done, but at least we can do a test. We can fire her up, but we can't do that until we change the electrolytics because they're bad and they can cause serious damage. So let me check this tube, make sure it's okay, and the other tubes, I'll test them all and then we will continue. Thanks for watching.